All right, the podcast mamas are back, and our friendly guitarist, the one and only Ryan. Welcome us back, Ryan. It's time for bed, oh, it's time for you. Mom and Dan says what you gotta do. We don't care if you ain't tired. Take it from the one whom you so admired. It's bed time for Ella Missy. Don't you cry or go and miss it. No more games and no running around. Cause we don't wanna hear another sound. Just take your bear and get tucked in. And don't make us swear again and again and again. All right, welcome back to the show. Welcome back to the show. And today it is a special treat. It has been about three months, I think, since we've had the podcast mamas here chatting it up. It's been a long three months. And today my co-host is none other than the wonderful Miss Laura of Miss Laura's Life Skills, but you are so much more than Miss Laura's life skills ever was. So I feel like I'm doing you a disservice, not, uh, you know, introducing you with more than that. So why don't you introduce yourself, Miss Laura? Tell me everything. It's oh, gosh. Well, thank you for having me back. It does feel like it was a long summer, like a good one, but a long, long one. Summer. It was a long yeah. Summer. Um, yeah. I mean, Miss Laura's life skills, I started... I think it was, I think I've been in it two solid years now officially, um, just working with kiddos in their homes and within the community, um, mostly life skills stuff. It's kind of transitioning towards day program stuff as a lot of my clients start to reach that graduation age. Um, But I did pick up a preschooler again this past year, so that's been really fun to start that process over again. They will keep you young forever. Yes, yes. So... Um, that's been really special. And then I've been trying to take it up a notch this past year, trying to do more group events and things like that. So that's been interesting to see group that. Group events for your students. For my students. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We did a spring training baseball game last year and we've done a bunch of bowling and some pool parties. So just kind of tiptoeing my way into it and trying to keep it as organic as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it's been exciting to see, you know, where it's all going to go. You know, you've got a really great uh, platform. You know, you've really built something special for parents and, you know, who can't find the right spot for their kid. Yes. Sorry about yeah. that, folks. <laughs> Yes. And or who just, you know, maybe they have a great spot in a school district or system of sorts, but just need that extra support at home or just want more social events for their kiddo or whatever. Um, I I couldn't agree more. And, you know, you you kind of dangle a carrot in front of me when you say how you've got students that are reaching the age of graduation from school. Mm -hmm. Where they're yep. no longer allowed to be in the in the any school district because usually that's yeah. that's twenty two here. I don't know if that's a nationwide right. rule. I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not- um, but I love that you know because I'm you know pursuing that. I've talked about it on the show several times. Yes. My question for you before we even dive into what else you got going on, I want to hold <laughs> you here. You ever th- you've got such a great platform. I'm gonna say that a second time. Do you ever thought about partnering up with somebody? Yes. I mean, so I have another colleague of mine that you know, Miss Amber, and we she's now doing basically the same thing I am. She started her own business a couple of years ago um, called The Art Nest, and she was mostly focused on art therapy with kids in their homes and in group, small group settings. Um, but you know how much I love her and I bring her on to literally every position I've ever had. (laughs) So she started working with a lot of my same kids. And so we would like, if I had one of my, our kiddos, she had the other and we would get together then. So this year we've taken two of our main clients and we're doing what I like to call the fake day program. (laughs) It's basically, we kind of started it last year, but it was mostly just like play dates. And then on that 
um, as USD half days, I would host a party to teach like party skills. And because it was a half day, you know, siblings could come, her girls could come. So there would be peer models for them. Yes. Um, and that worked out really great. But this year we decided to up it from like every other week to every week. And instead of just like play dates, um, we would do like kind of day program you know, activities just within the home. So like practicing work skills, like let's practice how to um, do some filing or sorting or cleaning or what have you, just things that we feel like we've seen or heard that day programs are working on just to kind of start in such a small setting. And then hopefully those kiddos can transition into an actual day program at some point. Okay. So. Yeah. Um, I mean, gosh, my mind is going crazy thinking like, what does she need? Does she need a space? Right. Yes. Does she need more, um, you know, like a behavioral, um, not person. Cause you really, you've got some really great skill sets when it comes to managing behaviors and how to execute that. Thank you. Thank but you, you probably and I can always use more support. Yes. Backup. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm, even if you were to train those people, Right. Um, gosh, I just, yeah, I really would love to see your dream come to fruition. I don't know if this is your dream. It's my dream for you to host a day program, like an actual yes. official Ella's right. going to Miss Laura's day program. Aww, that thank be you. A dream for me. Yeah. Well, I'm definitely trying to manifest a space that would sort of act as a catch-all, not just for Miss Laura's life skills, but also for um, my women's group and for other folks. I want it to be like a collaborative workspace. Yeah. I've had a couple um, close friends who are artists, one that could really use a studio, um, you know, just rooms to teach courses on whatever, big enough space to hold yoga classes, coffee shop out front so that parents dropping off their kids can mingle mm -hmm. or women coming to and from classes can mingle, um, what have you. I've, I've been writing about it. I've been drawing it out. I keep talking about it because I feel like everything else up until now has kind of just really appeared pretty easily because I've just talked about it. Yeah. So, um, I do one of my clients dads is actually in commercial real estate. So I have contacts that I can reach out to when I'm ready. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, I do, <sighs> if life would just stop sending me curveballs, <laughs> I do see a space in the future. Yeah. I do. Well, and you know why that happens. It's just to this test to see how many balls can she juggle. <laughs> Right. Like if this is something she um, really wants, let's, yes. you know, throw her a few, uh, you know, obstacles. Right. And, right. and see how she handles it. And yeah. That's that's how it goes. Right. I mean, you and I know this very, very well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting a little <laughs> the juggling is becoming a bit much. <laughs> but um, with that said, I would love to share because I know you asked about it a bit last year. Um, we yeah. did have the culmination of our first year of our women's group with a retreat in June. So this is Miss Laura's second business yes, that we're jump right. jumping into. Yes, that it truly became a second business completely accidentally last year. I did not expect it to take off the way it did. But basically June uh, 2023, I started Zooms online for women just to create a safe space online where women could come together and talk about different themes that tend to affect us all. And then it became some in-person tea and tarot events that um, were really loved. So those continued. And then I just mentioned to one of the women in passing, like, yeah, you know, we'll do a retreat one day. And she came back three months later with, okay, I've got cabins, I've got dates, we're set to go. And I was like, oh, crap, I yeah. have to actually do a thing. Yeah. How did you find your women? <laughs> um, so that's actually a really good question. Um, again, I just, this was an idea I've had for multiple years, like Why? probably three or four years ago wow. um I because I've been bullied so much in my life um I've been judged 
I have been watching women judge each other, be catty with each other for no real reason other than I think we're all just hurting and just really needing to feel seen and heard in our lives and communities. Um, so, and I'm just determined that we're better and we have more power when we come together. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I just kind of started talking about it with friends and everyone I talked to was like, oh my gosh, that's such a great idea. And I'd love that. And I could really yeah. use that and blah, blah, blah. But I don't think I really like other than friends that wanted to like show up to support me. Like yeah. when I held, when I advertised that first zoom, like I didn't have anybody like previously on board. You know what I mean? Like I sort of marketed it on my own and then friends started signing up pretty quickly from like all over the country. So these are people that I've worked with in the district in the past or like girlfriends from middle school that I still am friends with and college and, you know, just women that I've collected throughout the years of my life. Amazing. Um, and each Zoom, we'd get, you know, a couple more and a couple more. And we started a text message thread that's now like 16 women strong. Um, I mean, I think I counted it up. I think I had 30 plus different women between the Zooms and the T's and Taros and yeah. stuff like that last year. So Incredible. yeah, it's been and, and they've been we've some of them have brought in some of their women too. So we're, we're slowly collecting people that I don't specifically know yet. Yeah has been fun. And so I just decided, okay, I guess I'm going to really try and make a go of this. So um, we did just start an Instagram. Uh, we are officially calling ourselves Avalon, a self-care sisterhood. Oh. Uh, so yeah, yeah. And it's just, again, it's just a safe space to like celebrate each other, support each other, cheer each other on, yeah. learn and grow together. Um, so we've got a lot of different events coming up. I really wanted to expand beyond T and Tarot. Um, we're supposed to be having an event this weekend. That's kind of on pause right now, I think, um, given what's, what's happening in my personal life, but, um, hoping to do a paint and play. My artist friend that I was talking about before is coming in to do some watercolor, okay. um, with us and teach us some like basic skills. Cause I'm not an artist. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, and possibly some journaling on the watercolor after we finish it. Okay. Um, we will bring back our beloved tea and tarot in October. Um, I'm really excited for November. My natural path that I adore is going to come in and give us some uh, tips to stay healthy through the holidays. Awesome. Um, I think my physical therapist is going to do a Pilates class in January. Incredible. So, yeah, I'm really excited. Like a we're neat just lineup of events. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to try and do at least one per month uh, okay. this year. Um, I know other girls have great ideas for more, but I, this is sort of just a side hustle still for me. Like I don't really make any revenue off of this or anything. So it's just we're just trying to cover our costs right now. And mm -hmm. so I have to keep my energy up for Miss Laura's life skills. Um, so yeah. just trying to keep that balance because again I, I did not expect it to take off this quickly and this much so yeah. it's just been a little wonky <laughs> I, and summer how was summer this year for you did you get summer a break was or was it intense I kind of did so June was very intense leading up to the retreat like planning a retreat even though it was a pretty simple retreat it's still a lot of work and it was my first time so there were learning curves on things um, but it, like I said, it went really, really well. It was very successful. Um, I did for the first time ever have a client who was out like literally all summer. I saw him five hours total over the summer. Um, so was July, he, sick or he or she's sick no, traveling, or traveling, traveling. And, um, nice. I mean, they did come back from their three week stint in Europe with COVID. So there was a week oh. where they were sick okay. um but they have property up north too okay. so um they were smart and got yeah. the heck out of here because it was a hot one and is still you can see i'm trying i'm desperately trying to call in fall today because i love it i love it i i know i should be doing the same thing everywhere i go i bring the heat i brought it to minnesota i brought it to california i just can't get away from it yeah so. yeah so um and july i just 
I really hunkered back down into my self-care practices. So I told friends I was scheduling nothing on the weekends. Like I really didn't do anything outside of work in July and really recouped on my rest. Um, so July was actually quite lovely. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was it was interesting to 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 work through with a slightly heavy plate load, which it was nice. It was okay. gave just a, just enough relief, but kept bills getting paid. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was going to say you had like a kind of a consistent income to rely on, but at the same time, right. the downtime that you needed. Yes. Yes. Yep. Okay. And here we are. It's September. It's not even August. What? I the know. Heck? I mean, August was a whirlwind for me. So what happened for you? <laughs> I'm pretty much the same, you know, trying to help those transitions back to school. Um, One of them has been trickier than expected. We were told he was doing great and it seemed like he was much happier this year. And then come to find out he's been like screaming for me and Amber all day, every day. Um, So that was pretty devastating. Um, so we're working with the school to be more communicative, um, cause you know, he's got a whole support team at home that we're happy to, <laughs> to work on things, but we can't do that if we don't know. Right. Um, so yeah. And, uh, helped another kiddo celebrate his 16th birthday. So that was fun. Um, and now the then, kid that's having a trouble transitioning, what grade is that? Um, he's a senior, he's 18. Okay. And new school, same school. Same school. This is the third year. And like I said, last year seemed rough. Like he was, he only goes half days and we were picking him up and he was showing us just a lot of anxiety, even at pickup. Whereas this year he seems so much calmer and happier and we're having smoother afternoons after school. So this really actually came as a shock to us that he's just been really perseverating. I mean, he's always been a kid that like likes to talk about his schedule, kind of wants to get to the next thing, to the next thing, to the next thing. But there's ways in which you can cut that back and, you know, work on him to stop asking about it so much. And I've spoken to the teacher about that before. So I don't know if she just kind of let some of those tools go by the wayside or what happened. Um, Because, you know, once, once a kiddo starts doing better you tend to not keep up with all the things and then they start doing worse and you're like oh that's because I haven't been doing the things that's right yes okay I mean and it's fair that this you know the teacher probably has other students in the class and a hundred percent but you know that said like that's why there's paras in the class you know someone's got to pick up the slack so the teacher can't be a one-on-one for that one student right? right right well and yeah I mean We've been getting these papers home because they're they're doing a different reward system this year. So he are, he's been earning his stickers all day, and we've been getting notes that oh, so and so had a great day, and he did this, that, and the other. So we're like, I mean, you know me, I'm so data driven. I even yeah. went back and highlighted yeah. all the positive versus negative comments in the sheets we'd gotten so far, and there was one negative comment. So I was like, okay, <laughs> what's going on exactly? Yeah. I would yeah. love to have my friend Carrie, Ella's boyfriend's mom, on the yeah. show. Yeah. Um, she, she's she been having very tough transitions. In fact, I have not been able to catch up with her with all that's been going on. We've been traveling a lot this August because of um, Chase with basketball, Carter with Minnesota. Right. So I do need to circle back with her and hear what, what's going on. But I know that Jordan's struggled with going back. Yeah, um, a transition. Yeah. Ella Parkhill, on the other hand, up at four in the morning, ready for that bus to roll in so that wow. she can tell somebody this the story of her life. I mean. Right. <laughs> well, that's great. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to take it. I'm going to take that and be very thankful because, you know, she's tough. Like, I should clarify, folks. She loves going to school. She is great at school. It's all me that she's got the problem with. So if she's not woken up in the morning and I got to get her out of bed, she's mad at me. And then we're arguing about her wearing, you know, a full on sweatshirt hoodie with joggers and it's 110 degrees out and I don't want her getting sick. Those kinds of arguments that we have. Um, So do you guys still have that visual I made or no? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We do have it hanging in her closet. 
Okay. Pull it out all the time. Okay, this, good. Miss Laura made a lovely visual that shows the temperature and what to wear in different temperatures. And, um, you know, it, I think it's just her exercising her control. For sure. And that is the senior way of life, basically. Yeah. You know, I mean, you're always in sweats. And sometimes those schools can be freezing. So I understand. Sure. Very, very true. So we're working on negotiating and stuff. But I would say that she has definitely gotten more vocal over the years with yelling, saying no, and then her frustrated, Rawr! sounds like an animal kind of thing. Right. Um, but I mean... We were even in uh, Anaheim over the long weekend for basketball, and she woke up one morning, and four of us are in this room, and she was so hungry, she was taking all of us down until food got into her presence. It, oh, man. I'd never seen anything like it. Chad and I were like, you know, up against a wall, scared, because she right. was like the exorcist. Oh, hungry! Hungry! <laughs> And thank heavens, everyone, that she's, you know, four foot eight, 95 pounds, soaking wet. Right. Um, right. We can manage her. If she was, you know, six feet tall, closer right. to like 180 pounds, probably right. couldn't manage her so well. No. Um, which is, I'm sure, uh, I mean, have you probably haven't had somebody of that size in your program outside of the school? Have you? No, um, I have a past client who is definitely that size, okay. um, and he's come to a couple of our group events. I don't work one-on-one -on -one with him. Okay. Um, you step away due to aggression a few years ago. Yeah, so that happens. I, I've seen training. this happen, training. and it is with m many young men who mm -hmm. get to this like 18 to 20-something-year-old age, and they're tall and they're not necessarily all of them huge. Some of them are, you know, robust, right. but some of them are thin and, yeah. and but they're strong. Mm -hmm. And I know the moms are, you know, having hard times managing them. The dads yeah. are not always around. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, you know, Miss Laura, it's definitely something that could use some guidance. It's, you know, if you ever have a tip to give on that perspective. I, yeah, I mean, for me, it was honestly one of the hardest decisions. This was another one of my three-year-old panda babies that I'd been with forever. Okay. And long history then. Yeah. And he definitely had a history of meltdowns and things. Um, but obviously the bigger he got, the more intense they got. And he went from just kind of throwing things willy nilly to like aiming. Ooh. And so that's when I decided to step away. And he he had a behavior team from another company and, and everything. I mean, the parents could not have been really more on top of it. It just yeah. was it was what it was at the time. And I'm so tiny, as you know. And yeah. it's just like, you know, I am in more control of my livelihood now. And um so I, I made the really difficult decision to step away because I was afraid I was going to get very hurt. Sure, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, it sounds like, um, you know, and it, it, it does occur a lot in the teens as they're going through puberty, those hormones. Um, it does sound like he's uh, kind of calmed down a bit. Um, he's, uh, is he 20 now? No, I think he just turned 19 in June. Okay. Um, but yeah, it was uh, it was really hard, and so I, I still, you know, try and come around when I can to visit with them, and because um, I still love him dearly. Yeah, a lot of but, history there. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Just it. the the best advice I could give is get on top of it as soon as possible. Like if you start to see it, you know, even when they're younger and it's more manageable, like get on top of it as much as you can because. If you don't, it does have the chance to really balloon out in their teens and it can become a very dangerous situation very fast. Do you so. find that technology makes it worse or not impactful? I think it could. I think it would depend on the kiddo. Okay. Um, I think it's just, it just depends on what triggers them, what the atmosphere is like. Yeah. Um, yeah. Probably more that than anything, yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, without any judgment, like I've been on a lot of different homes and some homes are very overstimulating to me. You know, if there's other yeah. kids around making noise or, you know, some families, I know some days I like to have the TV on all day. It just feels good to me. But like when you're walking into a home with a lot of other things going on, that's really overstimulating. Um, yeah. And then other homes are calmer, but I mean, the kid could still be triggered, you know, um, this particular kid was mostly triggered by no, he couldn't accept no. Oh. Um, so, really? you know, it's, it's one thing when you're telling a toddler no, and they throw a cute little temper tantrum, but <laughs> when you're 16 and have real muscles on you, then yeah. those tantrums are not so cute. Yeah. Um, so, and again, you know, the, the family was as on top of it as I think they could have been. So this is, this is nothing on them at all, but, um, it just, you know, stuff. early intervention is just really, really key. Yeah. And you're right. I mean, the hormones kind mm -hmm. of, you know, take over and really yeah. can inter yes. intervene yes. with even the most mild Yes, of children. I mean, Ella could not have been a sweeter, more loving, and she still is. Right. She has empathy. She is so social and and yep. so yep. loving. But yeah. she, when she's pissed, mm -hmm. I mean, every man for himself, you know. Right. So right. Find a safe spot. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like a family could literally do everything right, and those hormones are just a beast that yeah. won't played with you know so is there a light miss laura is there a light when they <laughs> when they calm down from that or does it have you heard read is there anything to support where this goes at this point does it eventually even out or does it is that child just that child going forward now i mean from the very small amount of cases i've seen it seems like they do kind of simmer down um late teens early 20s i think so you know, I mean, I haven't come in contact with many aggressive adults. I'm going to these adaptive services dances with this one kiddo and yeah. most of the attendees there seem to be like kind of around my age, which is a little wild weird for me. Yeah. Um, but, but that's wonderful. They're more joyful and calm. Yes. Yes. They really seem to like meet up with their friends and get excited about the different songs and the different themes of the dances. And they all wear super cute outfits that go along with the theme and stuff. So, yeah, uh, yeah there's definitely a light at the end of the tunnel, but it, it, it can be a dark tunnel in the teens. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's no doubt about it. Whether you are, you know, neurodivergent or neurotypical it does not matter the exactly tough folks so and you're not alone parents <laughs> not at all and that was the beauty of having amber on board too with her two neurotypical boys that were right around the same age as our clients so she could confirm with the you know with the other parents that like yeah my boys are going through this exact same thing so yeah mm -hmm. that is comfort it's comforting Regardless, yeah. I mean, I've said it a thousand times to Nicole, who is my, you know, hey. co-host, you know, I've shared with her stuff and she's like, I got to tell you, Carly, I <laughs> feel bad for you. And I know that this is a level more than what maybe I'm going through, but I'm going through it. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, teen years, no matter which way you look at it, they can be brutal. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, we only have a few minutes left for the show, so I want to hand it back to you and share anything that's coming up that you would like to spread the word on um and you know maybe a final thought um yeah so uh if you're ever interested in the women's group you can check us out avalon underscore sisterhood i believe on instagram okay. um and then uh we do have our first event paint and play this weekend Hopefully that might get postponed, but um, keep to Instagram okay. for updates on that. Um, for Miss Laura's life skills, other than just starting off this fake day program with these two kiddos, I don't have any group events planned as of yet, but okay. stay tuned because any openings, that, any private openings. No, I'm actually full right now. Okay. So, yeah, so not yeah, taking I'm, new clients currently. Not right now. Okay. Um, but I will always let you know when there's an opening. Please. And um, 
Do you have an Instagram for Miss Laura's life skills? I actually don't because I have I haven't I like as yeah. soon as I lose a kiddo, I gain a kiddo. Like I've yeah. never had to. Um, yeah, I did just send one off to college for the first time though this month. Wow, that's a huge accomplishment. That is. Yeah. Oh, when, for everybody yeah. involved in that child's welfare. Wow. Yes. Okay. Yes. So he's, he's getting the full on, uh, going away to college experience in Florida. Um, it is like a special needs version okay. of college. Um, yeah. but he's got enough skills to attend classes and live in a dorm and wow. it's just been, there's been a lot of tears <laughs> this month on my end, uh, I, very happy yeah. ones, but okay. yeah. So that's been really exciting too. Oh. Um, so yeah, I would say, I guess on that note, I would say just, just don't give up. Just lean into your self-care, take care of yourselves, take care of your families. I feel like uh, if you live in the U.S., this fall is going to be a very chaotic time with the election and things coming up. So just take care of your loved ones and um, and we'll, we're all going to get through it. <laughs> All right, Miss Laura. Well, as always, absolutely wonderful when you come on to the show. So Thank I you. hope that you will always continue to do that. And I believe that the next time you are due back, um, we have you talking about the, the program with the mamas, with the self-care. Uh-huh. So that'll be lovely. Absolutely lovely to hear more about that. So we'll see you in a few weeks, a couple weeks. Thank you. And thanks for listening, everybody. Podcast Mamas out.